Hello and welcome back to the Beefy Tech channel. Today we're going to be doing a best performance optimization overview in that we're going to go over everything you can possibly do that is quite basic to better the performance of your computer. The changes and optimizations I'll be showing today are meant for every single platform out there and they're not platform specific in any way shape or form but I will use specific apps for some optimizations. The optimizations we'll be making today are easy enough to make that anybody that can download a file off the internet will most likely be able to do them with ease. With that said, I'm sure you have noticed the Call of Duty gameplay in the background. The game has been losing performance with the coming seasons and it will keep losing performance so what can you do about it? And the answer is not much but you can keep optimizing your computer to make up some of the lost performance that comes with every season. For those of you that main a different game than Call of Duty, don't worry, all the optimizations apply game-wide, so it's not COD-specific. Let's get things started. The easiest thing to start with is Razer Cortex. The reason you want this app is because it has a very, very good feature that is extremely simple to use and requires no complicated setup. So, let me quickly first show you how to download Razer Cortex. You're gonna have to type in Razer Cortex in your search bar, click enter, and the very first result will be Razer Cortex. Click download and make sure to select to only download Razer Cortex, unless of course you have a Razer mouse or a Razer keyboard or Razer headsets, in which case you could also download Synapse. Anyway, going back into the main Razer Cortex menu, you will notice that I've got it set up already and pretty much copying this top line right here will set you up perfectly. So here, if you tick a box, or untick it will make the difference on if it applies with the auto boost that you will leave on. So make sure this auto boost feature is green. Also, you're gonna want enable CPU core, disable CPU sleep mode, enable game power solutions, clear clipboard, turn off automatic uh, updates, clean RAM and sticky key. You can tune this to your own personal liking, liking but this is how I've set mine up and this will set you up for your games to run well. Down here, you will see that 14 out of 19 will be optimized. This is just random tasks, you can leave this as is pretty much and not touch it and it will be perfectly fine. To just fully explain what this does, it will apply all of these things at the top and optimize these services below the second you start up a game. So if I was going to go into Battle.net and start up Call of Duty, as I'm going to do right now, you're going to see in the bottom left corner the automatic game boost will enable and start clearing up my RAM and optimizing my apps. Up next, we've got optimization with Process Lasso. And yes, this does work for every single CPU. So just type in Process Lasso into Google. And the first one up is going to be from Bitsum. You click on that one and then download for free. You can also purchase it if you decide you really want to support them. But luckily, they're free. So I have Process Lasso open already. And I know this already is scaring most of you guys that came here for a simple optimization video with nothing too complicated. And don't worry, I will keep this simple. So I've got a 7950X3D. For my CPU specifically, I had to do a bit of BIOS setup to get this to run exactly how I needed it. But to keep it as simple as possible, Process Lasso essentially lets you set what apps are more important and what cores those apps can run from. So let's say you have a 5900X, RAMD Ryzen 5900X, yeah. 12 core CPU, it's got 24 threads. Well, that essentially means you've got two CCDs with six cores each, 12 threads each. What you can do is essentially restrict the um, cores to be only on one CCD. So just pick essentially the first 12 threads for a game and it will only use those first 12 threads. And I'll give you an example of that just now. So let's quickly uh, look over here. We have the Google, Google Crash Handler. So I have 32 threads total. It starts from zero, ends with 31. What I did is I took thread 16 to 31 and I forced it on, uh, I forced Google Crash Handler to only use those threads, which are my non gaming workload CCD. And that's very important because you can take a big load off of your CPU by moving it onto another CCD or onto cores that aren't being used for gaming. Now, let me give you a live example of where Process Lasso comes in really clutch. So let's say you have a two CCD CPU like I do. 5900X, 5950X, or even 13700Ks and 13900Ks, which have the P cores and the E cores, albeit that just works and doesn't require process lasso, but you can set it to more specific cores if you wish to. So I'm going to go and I'm going to play some Phasmophobia, which 
heavily benefits from 3D Vcash. Now what you're gonna notice is in Process Lasso, I've already got Phasmophobia running off of the first 16 threads as it's moving stuff around. So you have to go to CPU Affinity, always select CPU Affinity, and then you can select which cores Phasmophobia will run from. Okay, and now let's say you wanna play some CSGO. Well, what you do is you jump into CSGO and then you simply go here and what you have to do is get again, just right, uh, right click on CSGO, CPU Affinity, always select CPU Affinity, and now you select the other 16 threads because CSGO runs better off of the frequency CCD on my 7950X3D. So it gives you so much potential to just make a game perform well in whatever way you need it to. Phasmophobia needed the first 16 threads to perform best because it was the 3D cache CCD. Well, CSGO needs the last 16 threads and with this process lasso program, you can just do that and you can't really do it with a lot of other programs. Next, we're going to MSI Afterburner, which I'm assuming most of you have, but if you do not have MSI Afterburner, all you have to go do is just type MSI Afterburner, it'll appear, and download the very first file. This will bring up this HUD over here. So do the full download process, and then this will show up. This can work for both AMD and NVIDIA users, but I'll do a separate AMD like part for the GPUs in just a minute. So for you uh, NVIDIA guys, what you wanna do is go into settings over here, click unlock voltage control, unlock voltage monitoring, force constant voltage. So you have them all selected, click apply, okay. It will make you restart this. And then also make sure you have start with windows and start minimized enabled, apply, okay. These are the important parts of, the, of this entire process. And then here you can do a minute overclock, which I know most of you have some idea of how to do, but if you do not, you have to look into your specific GPU. For my 4090 specifically, I can only do about 115 on the core and 580 on the memory with 100% for voltage. And 100% literally just means 50 more millivolts. So it's not dangerous to turn this slider all the way up. It's perfectly fine for NVIDIA graphics cards at least. Then you can take your power limit to max. Mine is 100 because it's a 450 watt power limit 4090. And your temp limit also to max. Make sure to click this button over here. Save it to one of the numbers on the side and also make sure to click apply. Then you're going to also want to have this button here ticked and showing as blue. So it will apply on Windows startup whenever you finish up with all your settings. This next part is specifically for NVIDIA GPU users. So if you're an AMD, you can just skip this one. Regardless, let's get into it with the NVIDIA control panel settings. I know you've probably seen these a million times and I'll be entirely honest with you when I say they don't really make much of a difference except two options, I'd say, but I did change a bit more than that. So in power management mode, power management mode, you can go and select prefer maximum performance as then it will prefer the maximum performance. And in shader cache, you can do, dry, uh, normally it's on driver default, but I've got mine set to 10 gigs. So it will allocate 10 gigs just for shaders, which if I remember correctly, is actually more than the driver default for a game like Call of Duty, which is five gigs. Now. If you're, you're going to also see here that for texturing filtering, you can do high performance. And normally it's not on high performance, it's on high quality or quality, I mean. And honestly, this yet again doesn't make a difference because it will only apply this for DX9 games, which is very old games essentially, but it's better to just have it on to be safe. And uh, the very final important thing right here is going to be having the... What was it? Oh yeah, the low latency mode, I keep on off because I like to select within the specific games to turn it on and off and let their implementation be applied rather than, than the NVIDIA one. In theory, having low latency on Ultra is good if you have G-Sync on or V-Sync, but I don't use either of those things. So for me, it is best to leave it off. If you use G-Sync or V-Sync, turning on low latency mode is huge. You will need to do that. But if you don't use G-Sync or V-Sync or Adaptive Sync, you can turn this off. Moving on to the AMD section, we're just going to be using AMD Adrenaline itself. You NVIDIA guys can skip this part entirely and move on to the next section. But anyway, right here I want to mention I'm doing the very classic 2600, 2700, which is that 100 megahertz distance between minimum clock and maximum clock. I have to clarify one thing though. The minimum clock and maximum clock will not always be applied. It doesn't mean you're gonna idle a 2650 megahertz. It means when your GPU is being pushed in a game, 
it's going to only be able to be going between 2600 and 2700 megahertz. So if you're playing a game, this will mean you won't get drops in frequency, which is very good. The problem with this is, you gotta get it right, otherwise it's not stable. So you have to know exactly what your CPU frequency range is, like the maximum of it, to be able to do this. I generally aim just a tad lower and slowly go up until I start getting crashes to be able to identify that. Anyway, for this, by default, the GPU tuning is not enabled and neither is done advanced. So make sure it's enabled and then advanced, and make sure you get your CPU, uh, GPU overclock, quote-unquote, perfectly tuned in before you start doing other things to try optimize your computer. I have not actually touched the VRAM tuning for my own 6950XT, but you can if you're interested, it just introduces a bit more instability to deal with, so I did not care. Make sure your AMD Smart Access memory is showing enabled. If it is not, it has to do either with your BIOS or with your GPU drivers. So make sure that that AMD Smart Access memory is showing enabled. For fan tuning, you're going to want to hit enabled and then advanced control. And in advanced control, you're going to be able to do a custom fan curve and also ideally disable zero RPM, which just turns off your fans entirely when you're not doing anything too stressful. Here, you can make your own custom curve based on how hot your GPU gets. Below, you've got power tuning, which you're going to want to enable. And I personally recommend just going nuts to butts and max out the slider, depending on what GPU you have. You should get quite a decent performance boost, and it'll allow your overclocks over on this side to be better. One thing I don't have a screenshot of is if you go right here in the settings, and mind you, this is a screenshot, so I can't actually click on it, you're going to have access to the AMD anti-lag. You're going to want to enable that too. Moving on from some technical stuff into a bit more advice. If you have any single type of antivirus on your computer, delete it immediately. This includes Avast software, it includes McAfee, and it includes Bitdefender and virtually anything that is an antivirus. The best way to keep away from any viruses is to just not go on shady websites. And if you're somebody that regularly does that, stop, at least for your own good. These will not only hurt your performance, but they most of the time will not even protect you against any actual viruses. You're better off just using Windows Defender at that point, which you can't really uninstall. So uh, take my personal advice when I say uninstall your antivirus immediately and there's a good chance you'll see performance gains, as these do background things constantly and will take away performance no matter what, as long as they're turned on. If you are having performance issues and you actually just cannot figure out what it is after dozens of hours trying to fix it, here's the best recommendation for your situation. Completely reset your BIOS. And not only your BIOS, completely reset everything. If you've got an app that is applying any sort of performance changing features, let's say MSI Afterburner, or even your NVIDIA control panel, uninstall it, reinstall it, apply the exact same settings, follow through with what you had before and your new worked once upon a time but is now having issues, and it'll most likely fix your problem. If you're scared of doing a BIOS update or a chipset update, don't be. There's like a million videos out there that show you exactly what to do and how to fix a problem in case you really do manage to mess something up, albeit trust me, it is very difficult to mess something up with this unless you're actively trying to mess it up. But with that said, restart everything, reinstall everything, and most of the time with that clean slate, you'll be able to fix your issue easier than even installing Windows again. Just the other day, I was in the Modern Warfare 2 benchmark and I was noticing weird CPU results in that they're a bit lower than usual, and same for the 1% lows. Not only that, my GPU results were okay, so it had to be something with the BIOS. I just went in the BIOS, reset the BIOS and reapplied the exact same identical settings that I had, and as you can see by my latest benchmark, which is right here, that performance has returned. And now, I know it's a pain to have to reapply BIOS settings every time something messes up, but it is significantly quicker than reinstalling Windows. And if you cannot fix it with just reinstalling the BIOS, then Windows is definitely your next best option. But don't forget about chipset drivers. A lot of people don't actually even know how to update their chipset drivers, which kind of baffles me, but I can understand out something that can be overlooked really, really easily. So I'm going to go for chipset drivers for my specific motherboard, which is the ASRock X670 Steel Legend. And as you can see, I've already searched for this because I've updated my chipset drivers quite obviously. And what you're going to find is that you can go into the support page or the downloads page of whatever motherboard you have, and you're going to most likely be able to find your chipset drivers. I quickly scrolled down and found mine, and as you can see, it is right here. 
All you have to do is click download and it's going to do a normal download as if you're downloading an application. It doesn't install as a BIOS would. So just do this and it will most likely also help your performance. It does depend what motherboard you have. Obviously, not everybody has an ASRock motherboard, so you have to go to your vendor in the uh, chipset drivers download page, download the chipset driver, and that's it. Thank you for watching today's video. I just quickly wanted to say thank you for also getting me to a thousand subscribers. It might not seem like a lot, but to me, it means the world because it means I now have an official excuse to keep doing what I'm doing full time. Now, yes, it will take a long time before I ever make something out of YouTube, but I don't care. I absolutely love doing tech content and I'll keep doing it for as long as I possibly can because it's absolutely awesome to do this. With that said, if you guys have any questions, make sure to comment in the comment section and my Discord link will be in the description as it will be in every other video coming out anytime from now on. Thank you guys and have a good one. Peace.